when I was creating it, I was looking for spaces that were dead. And that's the whole reason for it was called cultivation is um, these spots, that was actually kind of a sp scary underpass that people went through all the time. The lights were dim, there was not a lot going on it. And with art, I was able to cultivate that space into a lively, more fun, even a safer, a happier place than this dungeon of a, a dead space. Public art is important for a number of reasons, but it really helps create a distinctive sense of place. So when you see a piece of public art, you feel like you're somewhere that you're supposed to be. Public art is important to any community because of in instilling a sense of pride in, in the community. It preserves the culture of the place where you are. It communicates a message about, about the place. And showcasing history, showcasing the future, and really highlighting our culture in our city. For example, right behind me is Chihuly's tallest tower in the world. And it was one of the first iconic pieces of art in downtown Oklahoma City. Yeah, we had bronzes um, sprinkled around downtown, but this is a new piece that people knew and could recognize. And once finished, it quickly became um, a symbol of, I don't know, from anything from the tourism to magazine as this is Oklahoma City. I think one of the great things about public art is that it's so accessible to everyone. Um, even people that may not be seeking it out. Like everyone that walks by a mural, they don't necessarily have to uh, have this knowledge base of fine art or uh, be invited to a show. They, they, it's, it's, for the, it's for the public in general and everybody can enjoy that art. You don't have to go inside or pay uh, to see it. Um, it's, it's really important and it also, I think, adds to the cultural richness of a city. They bring up uh, socio-political questions that a lot of people don't want to actually discuss and talk about and we have a, an area to have those conversations in a way that is open and academic and it's still um, an environment that is not exclusive. There's, a, there's studies that go on about you being in nature and being around beautiful things and with the more you're around those things, the softer your heart is, the happier you are and you could be having a bad day and then you see a beautiful mural in it changes your, uh, your whole attitude. Public art is important to me personally because it certainly gives me that outlet to, uh, to share what I've uh, nurtured over the years and in the, in the, in, in to appreciative audience and that's the most rewarding uh, factor there. Well we want to create a place where people want to live and I think having a high amount of attention to, to, to the culture and to the creativity and to the sense of design is very, very important. So whether you're talking about a building or whether you're talking about um, a piece of public art, I think what people see when they visit your city from a, from a public art standpoint is very, very important and it's likely to be one of their key takeaways when they go back home. Let's talk about the biggest art scene in the world, <laughs> Oklahoma City. As an Oklahoma City uh, transplant, I'm not a native, but I'm, I'm an Oklahoma, Oklahoman by choice, is what I like to tell people. Uh, coming downtown, uh, we lived actually downtown when we first moved here six years ago, and there was not much going on on the weekends. Um, so to see kind of the growth and what's happened in the downtown area just since we've lived here, I think is so important to the city and so important to a vibrant downtown and public art has so much to do with that. I grew up in Oklahoma City in a time when there wasn't a ton of public art in our city. I mean, downtown didn't really have a lot um, while I was growing up and so now to see a resurgence of murals like in and around the plaza district and in midtown and on western it's like really exciting it's almost as if when you go to europe and everywhere you look is something inspiring it's really fun for me to walk around oklahoma city and all of the districts and see new things and be inspired the tide is turning here where 
The Chamber of Commerce is beginning to come around. We're seeing a lot more public art and murals being installed. Uh, we're getting people to feel a sense of civic pride in the creativity that Oklahoma City has. Recently on the business and city side of things, they've added a full-time arts liaison to really help bridge the gap between the artists or organizations like ours, nonprofits, and the city permitting process. And then also there's been ordinance changes in some of the language that the different districts use. And so where in Bricktown we used to see that public art could only be historical in nature or provide some sort of cultural significance specific to that district, now they've really expanded it and opened it up to tons of ideas in the community. There's a, you know, some kind of weird dynamics here, or perfect chemistry for for, uh, for embracing the arts and, and really, you know, kind of, we're kind of like pioneers on a new frontier here in Oklahoma right now with art. It's a really special time in Oklahoma City for the arts um, amidst state cuts and things like that and what may be happening in the school system. Um, I think that a lot of organizations are really pulling out all the stops. We've got artists and working in all kinds of media with multiple kinds of experience from extremely internationally renowned and well-educated to a lot of uh, kind of scrappy DIY uh, investigative underground artists. Like I think it's really amazing the diversity. But one of the things that I really love the most about our community of artists in Oklahoma City is the support that we show for each other. There's very little of that competition, the feeling of competition amongst artists. It's really more about supporting each other. You look at the downtown bridges and underpasses, that's a downtown bridge and underpass. Every city has them, right? Well, Oklahoma City has them, but they have them covered in art. And not just art, but really, really good art from local artists across the state. And when you see that type of care and that type of pride put into something as simple as an underpass. I think it speaks to your community. I think it speaks about your community. Another cool thing is that our city has a 1% for public art ordinance, meaning anything that's constructed above ground, 1% of that construction cost has to go to public art. It's something we were doing with maps um, in the 90s, but it has now been placed by resolution and the council into law. And so it is now the standard for maps three and presumably going forward. Every day when I hear about something new that's happening, whether it's on a really big scale or a small scale, um, on private property or something really huge that's been commissioned by the city, I just am blown away with how thoughtful artists are and, and how talented they are and the level of collaboration and how much they support each other. Well, isn't it cool that the Oklahoma City Museum of Art does things that, of course they meet an audience that no one else is meeting with the biggest shows and with the famous, famous artists. Yeah, I think it's great that we have this venue that is bringing in those really big, exceptional shows mm -hmm. and that we have, we have a place to go see those and that artists can be influenced by seeing that work as well. And yeah. to see that kind of play out in the work that the local artists are making is really great. And I really think that for many people who do appreciate art, like the museum meets them where they are with very traditional paintings on the wall or with things that kind of fall in line with that. Like without, without the museum, none of the others may be even possible right. because it is art history. Yeah, and I think even beyond the visual art that they show, their film program right. has been huge for the film community in Oklahoma City and in Oklahoma, that there is a reputable venue that's right. screening these films that we're not going to see anywhere else that's totally true. in central Oklahoma. Yeah. So besides the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, one of my favorite things to do is to walk along Western Avenue and see all the murals. Yeah. We like to walk our dogs and it's one of my favorite parts of Oklahoma City and it's relatively new. And that's your neighborhood too, yes. so you can just have fun and check out all those little hidden jewels in alleys behind certain <laughs> walls and all of a sudden there's a mural. Yep. <laughs> That is one of my favorite things. I, I am super excited about Plaza District. Um, 
they really are cranking out a lot of new murals. You can visit every week and there's a new mural there. Um, and how that works, unlike other districts or locations, is that they really have a, a curatorial team and that team selects what's going up in these certain spaces. So you can have a dinner at the Mule or a lunch and a few beers across the street and then wander into some alleys. It's not dangerous, <laughs> it's cool, I promise. And there's something new every visit. It's such an incredible venue for street art that of course didn't exist before mm -hmm. and those artists were often like, you know, relegated to the darkness of night yeah, because right. <laughs> There, so there was no venue for them to create the kind of work they want, wanted to create without being punished, punished for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. And so I love that, you know, artists took the initiative to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was a process to get that through, you know, to get the permitting from the city and everything that they have now created this precedent that now that they worked through the system, mm -hmm. it makes it easier for other artists who come along behind them. They're, they're really paving a way. Let's talk about our friends at Current Studio. Yes, so you and I were both uh, at the Current- Birthday party. The birthday party, right. the one year birthday party, um, which was a really interesting exhibition um, yeah. of sort of collaborative projects. They invited artists to do a collaboration that allowed them to create a project that they wouldn't be able to do on their own, which uh, is is part of the spirit of Oklahoma Contemporary. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like how, how neighborhood a current studio is. They're really embracing the neighborhood, but also connecting different artists, bringing them in, engaging with the people who are there, and also trying to just bring different people together to experiment. Well, really that's what exciting. I, I really like about the way the Oklahoma City art scene has evolved. As someone who grew up here, mm -hmm. even though elements of the neighborhoods were there, they didn't have that sense of community. Right. It wasn't, let's all get together and celebrate what we're doing as a group. It was very much, you know, silo-based. And so right. if you look at Paseo and the Plaza and 23rd Street, it yeah. would dramatically changed. Not even talking about downtown and Automobile mm -hmm. Alley and Midtown. Um, the entire way the city is structured almost. Right. Right. Art has become an engine for, for economic development, for, for neighborhood development in a way that I don't know if it was true oh, not 20 at all. years ago. Oh, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Going from the museum into uh, a co component of contemporary art, like how grateful I am for Oklahoma Contemporary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're bringing us amazing work too, but by living artists and that, that's significant. Yeah, to be able to see that work and then often also hear directly from the artists mm -hmm. because they're bringing those artists in for talks and programming that goes along with the exhibitions. It's an opportunity that, you know, without them, we may have to travel several hours right. to do something like that yeah. in Dallas or at Crystal Bridges. Mm -hmm. Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it really, I love Oklahoma Contemporary. And the fact that they have such a strong educational component that backs up what they're doing with contemporary artists is great. It is, yeah. I mean, it's really, if you are an adult wanting to learn right. an artistic skill <laughs> right. outside of an academic institution, yeah, it's really one of the best places to go for really consistent, ongoing, high quality arts education. I completely agree. Just recently learned of, was it 21C? 21C, uh -huh. yeah, 21C yeah, in the yeah. That really surprised me when somebody, when I was contacted to perform there. Yeah, I yeah. said the museum, I said, I'm saying, what, did the museum start a hotel or something? Because I was connected. <laughs> yeah. And lo and behold, it was a whole different thing. And I understand they have, uh, it's more of a franchise or something it is, like that? It is, it's a small boutique hotel. They have um, locations throughout the country. And it's actually, it's curated like a museum. Um, they have a head curator, an assistant curator, and they rotate out the collection and put it up exhibitions. So it's not like it's just a stagnant show. Uh -huh. It's always changing. We've now got 21C as our new neighbor. Yeah. So that's been a lot of fun. We can walk over there and have lunch and also see their incredible collection. So we, we love having them as a neighbor and we're gonna be doing more stuff with them, which is exciting. That's exciting. And they have rotating exhibitions much like we do. Mm -hmm. Every visit you see something new. Yeah. Plus they have a great bar and restaurant. And don't we forget the purple penguins. The purple penguins, yeah. <laughs> they just kind of magically appear. <laughs> you, you were mentioning that the underground you spoke about earlier. Yeah, yeah, so there's a tunnel system below uh, Oklahoma City's downtown area and it's sort of 
never been there. Yeah, no, nobody, uh, well, not nobody, but it, it's, it's not a very well-known place. It's a system of tunnels that goes between a lot of the major buildings downtown, but within the tunnels, um, they have really interesting lighting displays. So it's sort of like this not so secret, secret underground <laughs> place that um, not a lot of people maybe know about. The places that kind of push the envelope locally in that same capacity, you know, of course Current Studio is trying to do that, but we're a fledgling organization. We're just in the beginning of our, our development, um, whereas there are some standards like Art Space of Untitled and IAO, which have been around for decades and are really trying to expand our experience with art. Yeah, they have always provided venues for art that we wouldn't see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And for local artists to have a place, you know, quality venue where they can go and present their work and have an audience and yeah. get that response is incredible. And they they have been the kind of the, I don't know, what would you call it? The flag bearer of like put continually trying to encourage artists yeah. to push themselves and do something new. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, in totally different ways too. Yes. Like where Art Space at Untitled is this beautiful warehouse space and how the way in which that space can be developed um, through either proposal but also through invitational and the way in which they've had programming that has pushed collaboration or mm -hmm. our experience with art is amazing. But then IAO, like being really one of the only democratic institutions left where you can submit through an open call and be selected based upon your idea, like it's such an important component of our overall health of community. Are there events that you guys look forward to uh, throughout the year, like special festivals or things that you Definitely. enjoy doing? Yeah. Lori, Festival, <laughs> Festival of the Arts thing. is the huge one right. for me, and it's uh -huh. something that I've you know come to as a kid and to watch it evolve. And artists who started out in, in small community-minded ways, being on that bigger stage, the engagement of having people create art while they're there, combining visual and performing, and it really just draws so many more people. I love having it right in front of the Civic Center, right in front of the museum. And that's where it started, mm -hmm. and it moved away and came back to its roots. Um, it is kind of a problem for me because I tend to eat lunch there every, every day. day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's one of the biggest arts festivals um, and its timing is perfect and they bring in um, international artists from all over the world and it's a pretty intense competition process to get in. <laughs> and plus all the live music and great fun just yeah. right out our front doors of work. Yep. Yeah, I think the Downtown Arts Festival for a lot of people, it's their one like real arts experience that they yeah. have every year because it's free mm -hmm. to attend. It's so family friendly. It happens at a time of year when you want to be outside and go doing doing things. The food component, of course, is of a big course. draw. Uh, but I love that it provides a kind of a well-rounded arts experience that's free to anyone. And yeah, hundreds of thousands of people come and experience visual art, music, mm -hmm. performance, food, everything. Well, and I love in addition to the, the one-off annual events that there are so many things that happen regularly. You've got Second Friday Art Walks, both mm -hmm. in Norman and on the Plaza. You have the sale on the first Friday. And so really, you know, h and when that gets back up, you have right. all of these engagements that you know you know, on a monthly basis, I can go out and experience art for free, which right. is big, and, and wander in and be with other people in the community who are sort of like-minded. What else is going on? Well, I live walking distance from the Paseo, and I know that they are not new anymore, but they're still one of my favorite neighborhoods in Oklahoma City, and to be able to walk there um, for their, you know, first Fridays, it's still one of my favorite things to do. It's something I've done since I've moved here. And while there's all sorts of new fun things going on, we can't forget our, our tried and true uh, Paseo uh, First Friday Art Walk. It's true, it's Oklahoma City's first arts district. I'm amazed every, I live in the Paseo and, and every First Friday, it, the mobs descend. I mean, it's amazing yeah. to see the, the amount of support, you know, hundreds of thousands of people come out every time, which is it's great. We're, we're beginning to get that culture of go out, support local arts, support local artists, see what's happening. And, and I think that's across the spectrum, like you said. It's not just the visual arts, we're seeing it with film, we're seeing it with music, uh, with performance, dance, and, and theater, so all, all very cool. Well, the stature has changed so much yeah. that it, this is just part of what you do for entertainment in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. But you know, one thing I really uh, 
like seeing that's happening around here is the movie industry. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. It's more and more enterprising, more diverse. And this may not be related, but all of our new music venues that are popping up all over Oklahoma City. Um, and so it's not a massive arena concert. It's bringing in the ones that I really love that are a little smaller, a little more intimate. Um, but it, it's bringing in new acts and new talent that probably wouldn't have stopped in Oklahoma City earlier without these new venues. Really, every weekend, often it's not that there's one thing to do. I'm sure you have to yeah, choose to between and, and decide, yeah. you know, where where you're going to spend your time. Which is great. I mean, that's a, that's a sign of a vibrant cultural scene. The arts are incredibly important to attracting people to a community and keeping people in a community. And one of the things we've studied is the economic effect of bringing visitors to our community. Arts and culture is one of those industries, um, unlike a lot of others, that really bring new audiences. Um, in Oklahoma, that's led to more than 12.7 million visits in 2015. We were blown away by the numbers, and I think that shows how our economies benefit from arts and culture. Almost every example of public art that I can think of off the top of my head has had an impact on its neighborhood, the business that it's in front of. Skyline Timeline it was at the Oklahoma City University School of Law and they haven't been in the downtown area for very many years and so that really drew attention to that school and that district and that area of town um, just by installing a piece of public art there. Investment in local art is not just the responsibility of nonprofit organizations. I think that the business sector needs to take the initiative to invest in public art projects. I think a piece of public art, like inside a business, is really can change the dynamic of the atmosphere in that business. Your customers are going to come in and see this whatever big piece of art or this canvas or a sculpture outside your business, and it is going to set a tone for what your business is. I think it shows um, that your business is involved in the community and that it's willing to support the arts, and I think that that is important to a lot of people, and a lot of people like choose to shop and patronize businesses that support the arts. If every business went and got their local music for their, for their marketing or commercials or whatever their need may be from local musicians and licensed directly, that's a six-figure shift in marketing dollars overnight. What does that do to an arts community in a city? It's, it's transformative. Who advice for strengthening and growing the city's art movement? That's a great question. I think really um, it's all about spreading the gospel of art. Um, and there are, I, I talk to people every day uh, who might say, oh, I don't really like contemporary art. It's not really for me. I, I really like playing the banjo and I sing in my church choir and I make collages out of photographs, but art's not for me. So I think expanding the understanding of what art and creative practice is and getting people to realize that no matter who they are or what they do, they're engaging with art probably every day of their lives. Uh, and letting them know that you know it's a big tent community here. I think most of the art artists in Oklahoma City, like the other civic leaders, are really interested in collaboration and outreach and listening to what people's interests are and what they think is important. I think more people need to be involved besides just the artists. I feel like a lot of artists around town feel as though it's just them trying to support each other and not enough um, people from outside the small circle giving that kind of support. So going to shows, um, supporting crowdfunding. Understanding that if they go to a place like the Plaza District and they buy from a local business and they're buying a, a good or a shirt that was created here locally through local artists at a local print shop, that that dollar that they're spending is doing far more than walking into a large box retail store and buying some shirt that you can buy in any city in the United States of America. Even things like arts education are so important because they fill very large gaps in places where we have no other solutions. You know, whether it's developing leadership skills in kids or um, helping them define who they are so they can feel better about themselves and also um, you know, it's just very stimulating for souls to have arts. I think one of the ways in which the art scene can continue to grow is to have more paying opportunities for artists. Right now, there are some organizations that do a really great job of supporting individual artists, whether it's visual or performing or music. I love to see more artists, um, you know, thinking bigger about their work and not limiting themselves uh, based on what they've done, been able to accomplish in the past. Uh, one thing I would love to see more of is people 
venturing out of Oklahoma City to see what else is going on around the country. We are a growing art scene. We may not be as big as some of the coastal cities, but we've continued to grow. And as Oklahoma City creates more spaces, we're continuing to see more kinds of art. I think at the same time as the city finds ways to incorporate form and function public art into their everyday expenditures. So when we, we, we talk about a bike rack, does it have to just be a bike rack made out of metal? Can it, can it be something more artistic and have more form to it? Maybe it's responding to a specific issue, um, like maybe a neighborhood is especially dark and that causes a spike in crime. If there were an illuminated sculpture in that place, would that make a difference? Artists just keep going. Um, keep doing what you do. Oklahoma City is ripe um, as an art, art scene ready to explode. It's easy to look at people and think, oh wow, this person's just top shelf and really knows what they're doing. Well, they, they, they got to that point with lots of hard work and just doing it constantly, constantly. But the important thing is to keep the creativity coming. Uh, keep these young, highly educated 20-somethings who have something to give to our community, something to relate to when they're in our community. I would very much like the art in Oklahoma City to be an attraction for people to come here, not tourism for when they come here. I don't think people go to New York to look at pictures of the Empire State Building. I think they go to New York to find new experiences, and I want Oklahoma to be that. Oklahoma City's art scene is very exciting because there's a tremendous amount of energy, there's a great amount of community, people uh, are excited about helping each other out, about lifting everyone up together, uh, which I really like, and I see change happening and I see people getting excited about um, doing projects, new initiatives, uh, making the art scene more expansive and inclusive. It's extremely exciting to be a part of it right now, and I think uh, of any time in the city or the state's history, now's the time to be engaging with art in Oklahoma City, now's the time to be an artist, calling all artists, all art lovers, now's the time to jump in. I'm ready to see those things happen. I'm not willing to move away and let someone else make it happen. I think the, the more important thing to do is to stay here and create a space. There's a lot of difficulty right now in funding the arts and supporting the arts and um, it's time to all lean in because it's something that we never want to lose. I think if I were to pick out a couple of examples of public art in Oklahoma City, I think you would start with the Skydance Bridge. Uh, I, I don't know that very many pieces of public art have more viewers or participants than that because of all the cars that go down Interstate 40. And what I like about it is that you know, many of these people aren't stopping in Oklahoma City. You know, they're driving from Amarillo or Albuquerque and they're going to Little Rock or Raleigh. But when they passed through Oklahoma City, they saw something astonishing. Perhaps the most memorable thing on I-40 from coast to coast is the Skydance Bridge. And I want them to leave Oklahoma City with a positive impression, even if they didn't stop this time, because they might stop next time.